Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this one we're going to deal with the eye muscles and movements of the eye. Now often I think people find the eye quite tricky and the reason for this is that there are three axes of rotation by which movements of the eye can occur. So we're going to take a look at this now and have a look at the axis of movement of the eye and in that space to the left we're actually going to draw the position of the eye inside the orbit and look at the angle at which muscles attach and this will explain why some of the movements are fairly complex. So first of all we're going to put on our axis. So first of all we have to imagine that this line is going straight down the globe through the centre of the globe of the eye and this one going straight from top to bottom is called the vertical axis. Vertical. So if you imagine that this is a pole going through the eye and you could twiddle that between forefinger and thumb, if you turn it this way you would get a movement of the eye towards the nasal cavity and that would be called adduction and likewise we could do it back the other way and that would be called abduction. So that's the movements we get on the vertical plane. If we draw a horizontal line, again imagine it going through the centre of the globe this is of course going to be our horizontal axis and again if you imagine that as a pole and you could twist it if you twisted it this way you would move the eye upwards and that's called elevation and you could move it downwards and the eye would move down and that would be depression now the last axis is front to back so imagine this line going straight through the pupil straight through the centre of the eye coming out the other side and that's our anterior posterior axis and again if we twiddled that we'd actually get movement of the eye which would be considered to be rotation and the rotation in this direction like that would be towards the nose and that would be medial rotation that's otherwise known as intorsion back the other way would be lateral rotation and this is sometimes referred to as extortion so that gives us our range of movement. Now if we draw a diagram that looks a little bit like this, which is actually looking down through the roof of the orbit with the eye in the midline like this. That's the pupil, draw on the other side as well. The eye is looking forward like this. You can see that actually we've got two axes here. The position of the eye comes back centrally like this and this is called the axis of the eye and sometimes this is referred to as the optical axis. If we use another colour, actually what we're going to do is we're going to draw on the point of attachment of most of the extraocular muscles which is this circle here represents the common tendinous ring and then if we draw a line from the axis of the orbit we'll notice that this is at a different angle so this is the axis of the orbit and the common tendinous ring is in line with the axis of the orbit so we're going to draw on a muscle here and this muscle just an example you won't know what the name of this is yeah it's called superior rectus some of you may know that that's not too important at this point the point I want to make is that because the attachment of this muscle comes from the common tendinous ring which follows the axis of the orbit and not the axis of the eye means that we don't just get pure elevation with this particular muscle now elevation is the movement that you would suspect is most likely but because of the angle it means we also get some movement in this direction so with the superior rectus we also get adduction and we also get some rotation of the eye around in this direction which is medial rotation so this explains why we get a multitude of movements with this single muscle let's now move on and actually have a look at eye muscles themselves and let's just label them so First of all, we have our superior rectus, that's the one we were just talking about. Down here we have our inferior rectus. We have our two oblique muscles, this is our superior oblique. And down here is our inferior oblique. And of course we have 
a medial rectus here and a lateral rectus over here. So now we're going to clear that away and we're going to look at the actions of these muscles. So we're going to start with our superior rectus muscle and here we get elevation as we mentioned plus adduction plus medial rotation. The next one we're going to cover is the inferior rectus. So I should draw that arrow slightly better coming down this way. This is going to offer us depression. It's going to offer us adduction plus it's going to offer us lateral rotation. The next muscle we want to have a look at is the superior oblique. This is going to offer us abduction plus depression plus medial rotation. The next muscle we want to have a look at is the inferior oblique. Now this is also going to offer us abduction plus elevation this time and of course lateral rotation. That leaves us with the lateral rectus which obviously abducts and the medial rectus which adducts. Okay, hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. See you again next time. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.